Well, most of you folks out there know that brownings are kind of our specialty around here, and that's that's kind of what we do. I'd say probably about oh 75 percent of what we get in are browning shotguns, rifles, one way or another. But we do a few other things in addition, and uh, today we're going to talk about a Winchester Model 70. If I blew one of these, I blew like a couple hundred of them in my lifetime, but. Uh, we got one in for a full restoration. It's an early uh, featherweight Model 70, nice old gun. It's uh, had some uh, issues. Uh, someone blew it before, and when they did, they took some of the lettering off the barrel, and uh, we're gonna replace all of that. And uh, these guns come with kind of a, a bead blasted receiver. It's bead blasted, but the barrel's polished. And uh, some of them have alloy floor plates that won't blue, so you gotta kinda watch that. This one I'm not sure about, but we'll check it. Um, looks like it's steel, but... So anyway, to do these and do them right, you have to make them look like factory again, and you certainly don't wanna take any lettering off. You wanna blue it with the, the correct blue and all. And uh, the wood finish, Winchester wood finish is kind of a uh, open poured type of a finish. It's not a real, um, you know, sleek, fancy type of finish like like on the Brownings, uh, the Safaris, we do in that high gloss. Uh, we do some semi-gloss finishes. The, the pores are filled and they look very nice. Well, the Winchesters aren't quite that that good. They have that open pore finish. And, but that's factory and the, the goal is to make these things look factory. No matter what you do, you want to make the thing look like it was, like it came out of the factory. That'll keep the value up. Like I tell guys all the time, if a gun looks re-blue, then yeah, it's pretty much ruined. If it looks like it's been restored, yeah, it's, you know, that just kills the value out of, on it. So, uh, you know, if you're going to restore them, make sure they look like new. Well, let's, uh, and the stock on this gun's really beat up and scuffed up. We're going to get all that out. We're going to do the original type of Winchester open pour type of finish, and we're going to blue it the right way, and we're going to touch up the lettering on the barrels that has been uh, kind of wiped out. But anyway, first off, we'll start off by tearing the gun down and we do that by putting the safety on um, about halfway on, there's, there's a, about right in the middle. That makes it so I can take the bolt apart. And uh, so we'll pull it out and we'll dismantle. I've started taking a few parts off this gun just to speed things up a little bit. This is not going to be a real lengthy video, but it's going to show you kind of what you can do with a Model 70 and uh, in order to make it look like factory again. So. Uh, remove your uh, cocking piece from the bolt. Now this bolt handle we're going to blue again and the bolt handle also is a, a kind of a matte blued uh, bead blast type of finish and the extractor is uh, they're blued and the extractor uh, keeper ring is blued also so we're going to pull those parts off and uh, blue those and we're going to polish the bolt so that all looks factory when it's done. Now we have to dismantle the uh, the uh, the uh, bolt uh, the firing pin and uh, in order to get that out, there's a collar on these uh, firing pins that you uh, push down and give a 90 degree turn. When you do that, uh, the firing pin spring comes off and uh, the gun is uh, getting closer to being ready to blue. I don't take everything out of them when I uh, blew them. I leave the safety in and then I cook it out good in the ultrasonic after that because they're hard and difficult to get out and back in. and uh, But when I take that one screw out there, then the firing pin comes out. But I'm going to leave a couple parts in here that are real difficult to get out. But if you ultrasonic it after you've uh, blued it, uh, the plungers and the springs and all will be uh, cleaned out and uh, you'll be just fine doing that. So on the uh, Model 70s, they've got um, three screws. Uh, I tried to tell my sons around here that uh, this is not a difficult gun to take apart. Um, they're easy to put back together. I don't know how we're going to make a video on it and and uh, make it, you know, give people something to look at because there's really not much to taking one of these apart and putting it back together. So we've removed the uh, floor plate. And you know, the more I look at this and I feel this, I believe it's an alloy. And if it is. We'll go ahead. Yeah, that's an alloy. I can feel it. But just to make sure, I'll step over out of the camera and I'll take a magnet and check it with a magnet and no stick them. So that's an alloy. Uh, sometimes this uh, this is steel, but the whole thing's alloy on this one. So we're going to either um, 
We'll probably anodize that just to make it look right. You can paint them, but the one thing you can't do is blue it. That's for sure. You try to blue an alloy part, and uh, if you hang it on a wire in your bluing tank, when uh, you go back about a half hour later and pull that out, you're going to have nothing but the wire and a contaminated tank of bluing salts because it will dissolve that, that aluminum, that alloy, as they like to call it. So I'm going to take my three screws out uh, that hold the uh, action into the... Uh, uh, the stock. Now, if you remove those, let's see if I got them all out. I think I got one left here. You take those out. Really, a simple. It's kind of like bluing a, a Mauser or, or something along that line. They're just easy to take apart and put back together. And uh, but there again, you got to make them look right once you've done them. They've got to look like they're factory, or, or you just kill the value of them. So get some of these screws out of the way here. And I'll show you some things on the trigger assembly. They're, they're easy to take apart. You've got to be careful putting them back together and taking them apart that you don't lose certain springs and plungers because they like to come shooting out on you. You need to check this trigger guard also. It feels like it's alloy, and it is. Now the uh, plunger here will be steel. See that magnet stick on that? So you've got to pull the plunger out. Now we're going to have uh, to do this gun correctly, and we'll, just, we'll anodize these aluminum parts. Um, that way it'll really look factory. So, we've got the uh, uh, barrel action, the uh, barrel and receiver out of the stock. Um, I've removed the front sight hood and sight already just to speed things up. I'm going to take the rear sight out. Don't think that's a factory sight from the looks of it, but it's what was in the gun. So, now, to remove and take apart your uh, trigger assembly, I start off by removing the rear pin, and when you do that, this is your bolt stop, and uh, you want to take that out carefully by sliding it down and watch it through a spring and a plunger right behind it. You don't want to lose those, so pull those out, and those are right in the back of the receiver. Get rid of that and that. And then go ahead and drive your pin on out and remove your trigger. There's the trigger. It has an adjustment for backlash, a little bit of adjustment. Now, we're going to go ahead and remove the uh, uh, sear. And that's this uh, pin. There's a large kind of a head on this pin on this side. Over here, it only drives one way, of course. Out it comes. The sear's out. Now, the only thing that leaves is the ejector, which is a little hard to see here, but... It's this little piece right here. And it's spring loaded. There's also a spring there. Now this, there's a pin. As you can see, the receiver's cut out here. So you can remove that pin and you can drive it all the way through the receiver. It's at an angle. So you just drive it out at an angle. Like so. There's a small pin. And hang on to things as you pull this out because you don't want to lose your little spring that uh, goes behind the ejector. And... Uh, after we have removed that, the gun is torn down and ready to blue. Now we're going to uh, polish this barrel, then we're going to get over to our engraver who will have to hand engrave uh, the lettering back on it. There's a trace of it left, which will make it easy for him. And once it comes back from him, we will bead blast this receiver, we will polish the barrel, and we will blue it and make it look factory again. We won't put quite as much of a shine on on the blue when they blue, blued it originally this is not original blue as we talked about it's a little too shiny we're not going to make it quite that shiny because we're trying to make it look factory now the stock is stripped down and ready some of these have metal butt plates this is a plastic butt plate um, we will leave that on there when we sand it so we don't sand it low and what have you and we're going to send this stock over to the uh, uh, wood guys and uh, they're going to get us a finish on that that'll look just factory it's not to me it's not a very pretty finish it just but it looks factory it's uh, it's gonna have some open pores and there again that's the whole goal is to try to make this thing look like it was factory new and it'll bring the value back on it because the value has been hurt with this blue job it just bluing is a critical thing they've got to be done right and when they remove this lettering it just makes the gun look like it's been re -blued. And uh, we even have a Winchester proof stamp, and we'll probably stamp it again where the proof stamp looks like someone 
has attempted to stamp over it. I think that's factory. But if we lose that proof stamp on the barrel of the receiver, we can stamp those back on. Um, there again, little things that make it look factory again. So we'll get started on it, and our next video, we'll be putting it back together, and uh, we'll show you what all we did to it, and hopefully we can make this thing look like a, a new factory gun again. Thank you.